What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on SAT math from the Scalar Learning Channel. For everyone who's about to take the SAT, this video is super, super important, especially for those of you who are trying to reach for those upper echelons in the score range. Now, just a quick caveat for those of you just starting out on your SAT journey, I would wait a little bit on this video, but for those of you who are going for the gold and are really trying to up your game, this is the video for you. So without further ado, I will present my six precision SAT math formulas to give you that extra edge when you're completing the math portion of the SAT. Let's do it. Formula number one is point slope formula. Now again, the most important formula on this test is gonna be slope intercept when you're talking about linear equations. But point slope can be great and it can shave a little bit of time off questions when you are using it. So for example, if you know a coordinate and the corresponding slope of a line, you can put those together to make the complete linear equation. The other great thing about knowing this formula is that in certain occasions and certain questions, they actually present the equation for the line in this format. In this example here, where we have a coordinate of one, four, and a slope of two, you can see how we slide those values in appropriately. The next precision formula involves sine and cosine. Now you have to know the trigonometric ratios found in SOHCAHTOA, that's a must, but this formula is a super awesome precision formula that can save you time and actually help you get to the answer for really difficult trigonometric questions. The formula is sine of x equals cosine of 90 minus x, but let's deconstruct that a little bit. It basically means sine of one angle equals cosine of the complement of that angle. The SAT loves to test this concept in particular, so knowing this formula is going to help you tremendously. Here are some concrete examples of actual numbers that would make this a true equation, and of course you always see sine of an angle always equals cosine of the complement of that angle. And again, just to refresh your memory, complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees. Next, we have the precision formula for the sum of solutions of a quadratic equation. Once again, this is a very slick formula to have in your back pocket because the SAT definitely asks about the sum of quadratic solutions. Now, if you don't know this formula, negative b over a, you can always find the solutions and add them together. So you can always do that, but this can shave off a nice 20, 30 seconds. And as you can see in this concrete example below, all we've done to find the sum of the solutions of this quadratic equation is simply place the negative b term over a. The next precision formula also involves quadratics, and of course it is the discriminant. Now, the discriminant is just a piece of the quadratic formula, so it's not super essential that you have to go out of your way to memorize this, because if you know the quadratic formula, you know the discriminant. But what can be really helpful is if you know what the discriminant says about the nature of the solutions of a quadratic equation. For example, if the discriminant is negative, it means that there are no real solutions. When the discriminant is zero, it means that there is one real solution. Last but not least, when the discriminant is positive, it means that you have two real solutions. Next on the list is the area of an equilateral triangle. Now we all know the formula to calculate the area of a triangle, which is one half base times height. And of course, you're using that formula to get this formula, but in case you get an equilateral triangle and only are provided with the side lengths, you can use this as a slick shortcut to get the area. This famous formula is of course S squared times the square root of three over four. And below I've shown you how to calculate the area of an equilateral triangle with side lengths of one, two, and three. Last but not least are the Pythagorean triples. And this isn't per se a formula, but these are super important number patterns that appear over and over on the SAT. If you have a right triangle showing up and it has integer values for the side lengths, more often than not, it's gonna be one of these four Pythagorean triples. So we got a three, four, five, five, 12, 13, seven, 24, 25, and eight, 15, 17. If you do happen to forget these, it's not the end of the world because you can always derive it from Pythagorean's theorem but knowing these can save you some time. And one more thing is you wanna be aware of not only these core Pythagorean triples, but also their multiples. So for example, if you take a three, four, five and you multiply it by two, you got a six, eight, 10. That's still a legitimate Pythagorean triple for a right triangle. These formulas can be amazing time savers and can truly help you in terms of accuracy when it comes to the SAT. That being said, whether or not you wanna spend the time to memorize them is up to you. In certain cases, if you try to remember too much and you mix stuff up, that can be hazardous. And you can make your way through the test without these formulas, but using them, of course, will give you an extra edge. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click that like button, and if you wanna see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you in the next video.
Take it easy.